A Suffolk police chase ends with a suspect's car driving off a cliff and ending up in the sound. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Buffa. We'll have more on that chase in a minute, but first, it was a historic solar eclipse day here on Long Island. The Long Beach boardwalk was packed with people looking up, many of them rocking their eclipse glasses along Edwards Boulevard. There were also viewing parties, of course. The Cradle of Aviation Museum was buzzing with excitement as 90% of the sun was blocked by the moon. Outer ring of the sun is really hot and bright, and when the moon goes over the sun, you can only see that part, so it can hurt your eyes. Well said. Now another big watch party was in Farmingdale. Sherry Einhorn was there. Have solar glasses. Come on up and take a look through the telescope. I think this is like the coolest thing ever. We do get a pretty mesmerizing experience that allows us to you know, sort of reflect on our connection to the cosmos. Solar Eclipse 2024 did not disappoint. We weren't in the path of totality, but it was breathtaking. Oh man, I like, you know, I'm gonna experience this and I'm gonna tell all my kids about it. Farmingdale State College handed out more than a thousand solar glasses to students and staff who crowded onto the lawn to experience the rare celestial phenomenon. I enjoyed it too. Oh wow, she's right. It does kind of look like a banana right around now. And it's orange. The last eclipse for Long Islanders was in 2017. But this time we got to experience about 90% of the sun being covered by the moon. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know, that's just crazy right now. Have you ever seen anything no, like this? I haven't. Neither has this physics professor and astronomer. I wasn't expecting it to feel the way it did and it was extremely exciting. There was energy and excitement in the crowd. I can't believe it. It's like one in a lifetime opportunity for sure. Like a crescent moon, but it's the sun. Crazy. Long Island won't see a total solar eclipse like it until 2079. It's, it's magic, you know? I, I, that's a dangerous word when we're talking about science, but it feels like magic. In Farmingdale, I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. And you can find more coverage on the eclipse. Go to Newsday.com. Click Get More on the Newsday TV video box. All right, back to that 45 minute police chase on the North Fork. Cops say it all started after Roger Foster allegedly slashed a tire in a parking lot. The 56 year old from Florida already had two warrants out for his arrest. Never hits the brakes, uh, never slows down, um, hits an embankment at the end of the street, goes airborne over the bluff off the beach and into Long Island Sound. Now the chief says the drop is about 100 feet and then another 50 feet to get to the water. Officers rushed down the stairs to the car and arrested the man who they say had no visible injuries. And a pediatrician from Long Island is, was killed rather after falling out of a moving trailer on her way to view the solar eclipse. Police, police say Dr. Monica Warren Iska was for, on a trip with her family in an Airstream trailer. They were traveling from Stony Brook to upstate New York. Now the incident is under investigation. And Newsday found migrants who labor on multi-million dollar estates living in the woods. Jasmine Anderson has more in our special series, The Migrant Struggle. This is the Hamptons. Luxurious homes, expensive zip codes, a playground for the rich and famous. But this is also the Hamptons. Hidden migrant encampments right along Sunrise Highway and right behind backyards. Not far from the bustling Main Street boutiques and the picture-perfect manicured lawns are the unseen neighbors who help maintain those world-famous summer views. Bueno, limpiamos afuera, las casas son bonitas, este, casas de mármol que tienen por afuera. Son mansiones, sí. Sí, en, en Iscanton, uh, Bridge Canton, por ahí también. San Harbor. They live in the woods throughout Southampton town. Ahorita, como hace frío, pues no nos bañamos. Victor Cruz is doing what he can to survive. Y a veces casi como la una de la mañana nos metemos, pero aquí ya nos calentamos un poco. Cruz has been living in this encampment for four years. After being priced out of his apartment, without electricity, he relies on the skies at night. Como a las once se mira que todo ya está oscuro. 
pero después ves ya sale la luna, ya se mira como que si en el día anda. The 48-year-old from Mexico says it's hard to find work in the winter. Sí, encuentra uno trabajo, pero a veces no todos los días. He and others walk to nearby stores daily, hoping to get picked up by contractors. A veces somos varios, los, lo van a uno tornando, ves. This is Alberto Hill Garcia. He's been living in another encampment for the past three months. While his boss is wintering in Florida, he's been unemployed, trying to push through until the weather gets warmer. He trabajado, pero... Así tres días en la escaping. The 53-year-old from Mexico makes do with what he has. ¿Qué es la unas cucharitas que este que tenemos aquí para cocinarnos? O sea, para comer la comida que nos dan ahí en la iglesia. What keeps him going is his family. Most of the money he earns goes back to them. Casi 200, 300 pesos le manda mi familia. Locals we spoke with say the encampments are an open secret. But not for Michael Somas, who just moved here about a month ago. It's horrible. You know, I don't ever want to see anybody, you know, homeless or living in, you know, what literally looks like to me was a tarp over some sticks here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's sad to see. It's sad to hear. While it's hard to hear, it's the reality for many. In a lot of cases, there is no choice. They're building, you know, structures to survive from, from the elements, and they're gathering food together, and they're looking for work together. And for Victor and Alberto, they are just looking for some normalcy. A ver si encuentro así como antes vivía yo. Jasmine Anderson, Newsday TV. And tomorrow we'll look at why migrants cannot go to shelters. You read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More for the Newsday TV video box. And only in Newsday, nearly 36,000 New York drivers had their licenses suspended. The DMV says it's because they failed to take an eye test. A temporary measure during the pandemic allowed drivers to postpone the required test, but not skip it. Driving with a suspended license can result in a $500 fine. And Maroon 5 is coming to Jones Beach this summer. The July 3rd show is part of a nine-date mini-tour. The opening act will be Marin Morris. Tickets go on sale this Friday. Newsday Sports is brought to you by King O'Rourke Automotive Group. The Mets' new dance team is bringing new hype to City Field. Chris Kelman has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Mets fans, there's some new entertainment at City Field, and it's the Queen's Crew! The bright and bold orange and blue crew you'll see this season in the plaza and on the dugouts is the Mets' new dance team, which will perform before and during home games. The inspiration really came from Queens itself, where we pit play, um, and drawing from the diversity, the grit of New York, um, the authenticity and kind of um, infusing that into the identity of the team. We are a true crew where everyone has their own talent that they bring to the table. The co-ed group has 19 members, including two native Long Islanders. I grew up playing sports, so it's just like the best of both worlds. I love the Mets, I love dancing, so this is just like perfect for me. We're going to bring the extra hype to everyone who's watching. And the hype around this crew is real. I could not believe what I saw. These guys are just so talented. This is a hit. This is an absolute hit. From City Field, Carissa Kelman, Newsday TV. Now to read more about the new dance team, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More for the Newsday TV video box. All right, with the moon out of the way, let's take a look at your Long Island weather. And guess what? The sun is going to treat us pretty nice because you can see tomorrow we're near 70s. Tonight we're dipping down to mid 40s. But taking a closer look at tomorrow, you can see those are some spring temperatures. Mid 60s, we have partly cloudy skies. And the weekend, I'm saying the weekend because the seven day doesn't look great, but the weekend for now looks dry.
Long Island Weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.